Um, the name is long, angle of arrival estimation for low power and long range communication networks. Before I start talking about that, I want to establish a bit of uh, more general ideas about what is that and, and, and why this is actually important. So we start first with the, uh, 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 one second. We start first with the Internet of Things, IoT. So what is Internet of Things? And because this is actually like what I'm deploying there is, is all for, for this concept, Internet of Things. So the, uh, I will present now what is it and why we need it and how actually we, we deploy it. The first thing actually for that is called uh, uh, connecting objects to the Internet. So that's, that's the general ideas, how we can make uh, how, how we can connect objects, no matter what kind of objects, to the internet. And this idea is a bit of, um, uh, it's been developed since, since the last few decades and it's, uh, it's, it's been a hot topic for researchers and it's, it has very potential objects. First, let's, def let's give ideas about what kind of objects we are talking about. So we can talk about, uh, there is a lag here, yeah. So there can be, uh, bikes, it can, or any kind of sort of uh, move, moving, uh, uh, transportation like cars or, uh, and, and so on. Uh, it can be appliances, home appliances by any kind of any connection. And also, of course, it can be uh, assets and, and, and shipments and all these kind of, of, uh, of uh, uh, needed objects for, for our daily lives and industry, of course. And then all these objects will be will have sensors, and then we will connect to the internet to provide a very wide, uh, a very, very wide da data data information about these objects. When I talk about uh, uh, about objects, I, I'm talking about billions of objects. They are connected uh, to the internet, and there will be some kind of decisions, whatever kind of functionality these objects are required to do. So that's what is actually Internet of Things. Now the next question: Why we need that? Uh, actually, if we never like with our develop when our life start to be developing more and more, we need really to connect to the internet. Now you cannot imagine yourself without like access to the internet as a personal from your mobile, from your home. Now this is what we are talking now via the internet. So why not for our objects? So we can monitor health activities, patterns, all these kind of, 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 of data that we can really now have a tangible information about it. Also, we have uh, ef uh, 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 efficient operations. So you can imagine you can have a chain of, com of, 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 of applications. They work one after the other. And uh, they achieve that. Uh, uh, imagine if your refrigerator indicates what is it missing in there and directly communicate with the store to provide you with that without your intervention. So that's, that's the, the sort of ideas. Of course, when we talk about transportation, safety is a quite important part. I will a bit uh, elaborate on that more. And for shipments or for industry in general, identification. So now there is a lot of amount of, of, of man work hours in order just to identify uh, uh, identify trucks or, or shipments in general. And then of course also we need to the position and the tracking for these shipments. So all these information, that's why we need uh, Internet of Things. And or actually that's the ideas in the future deployment of it. Now, how we do that, uh, uh, the, the first thing we need actually uh, a, a transmitter, a, a sensor information at every in, every, in every device, and then this transmitter should, be, uh, should trans transmit the information to the internet. So that's the basic concept. But then what kind of transmitter? There are pl plenty of them. There are a wide variety of them. That how we can choose what, like what is the suitable one for it? So there are some kind of a criteria in order to do that. First of all, it needs to be low cost because we are talking about connecting objects and these objects can vary in prices. You will not take a bit like a tag of, of 100 euros on, on, on 10 euros uh, object or tool. So the ideas need to be low cost. It needs to be uh, very uh, small because like these objects can vary in, in, this, in, in, in sizes. So the size is not always available. So we need it to have it small. 
And we need it for long range because if we are talking about mobile objects, room, room, roaming all the world, when we're talking about the world, not necessarily a city or country, it can be roaming really all, 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 all around the world. And, <clears throat> and that's why we need really a uh, uh, long range and definitely low power because if we are consuming a lot of power, you don't want to really, for example, if you have a shipment like this and every container it has a a device, transmitter device, you don't want to every day go there and change the battery. That's not feasible. We need a low power solution. So that's in general the internet of things. And of course, this concept opened the ideas for more futuristic deployment. So the first like come to mind, by the way, all what I'm presenting here is just examples really is not necessarily the full, the full image for what, what is there and what is the potential. So uh, the first thing come to mind is smart cities. Smart cities means everything, like the concept of having a full city, everything is connected to it, uh, in it to the internet, or at least as much as possible. And that's can improve the quality of life. So in, the, in this case, you don't really, you don't be bothered by some kind of tedious work you, you have to do sometimes. Uh, rather than everything, it will be automatically uh, done for you. Uh, transport in the cities, there will, you will directly uh, uh, update it about the transportation situations. Uh, energy consumption, of course, like also that's that will will be uh, because the more information about you, where 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 you are and what you use the more efficient use of the energy at home office, et cetera. And of course, monitoring the pollution level in cities or, or air quality. And uh, that's, that's one, oh, one major aspect that now we battle now again is the climate change. And that's, that can be a crucial information. So that's the, f the first example come to my mind. The second one, it comes with the a smart highways. So a smart highways, it makes highways as much, much more safer. In that case, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if all the cars are connected to each other and all the cars connected to the internet, then you know the, the, the car in front of you will break even before the plane pair goes on. So uh, all these fast decision can be done with, with this kind of, uh, uh, of information you get. Uh, smooth traffic, of course, like uh, that's then you there will be no sudden like uh, break out and a uh, break and, and acceleration. Then that, that's the idea. And of course, that can enable the auto driving. And, and now the third part, the third example is smart farming. So smart farming, if you are, if you are really, if we have a very good knowledge, knowledge about your ground, your, 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 uh, your field, then you can really make a precision ag agriculture or preci uh, precision livestock farming. And that's definitely will make less uh, uh, resource waste. So there, these are just a few ideas about what we can achieve with such uh, all, all thanks to the Internet of Things concept. Now, how we can do that? So now the Internet of Things uh, is good. We want to do it. At least like uh, the majority of people will be full comfortable of using such a technology. Then how we do that? Uh, the, 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 the main frontier kind of networks for to, uh, to, to provide Internet of Things uh, capabilities is what we call it low power wide area networks. So LP1, it just please remember for anyone who is not familiar with LP1, remember the name. It's just a network similar to your uh, 4G, 5G or 3G network, but uh, it has rather than concentrate on, 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 on uh, data rate and streaming, it has different kind of uh, qualifications. So which I discuss it in a bit. So it's just a network but because it's low power and wide area, so that's 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 the name. Now, what is the what is what what is the benefits of this, or actually, what is the characteristic of of LP1 technologies? So, first of all, from the name, of course, low power. And what we mean with low power, we mean batteries can last like coin cell batteries can last for years uh, operation. So it's there is no really like you don't need like the idea is that when you buy a product more or less you shouldn't really be worried about changing the battery uh, that's that's kind of low power we are talking about 
of course, we talk about long range because you don't want a lot of a lot of uh, gateways in your way. So the the idea is that you have a long range, which is can on the order of kilometers. So that's that's the call. The, that's the, that's the requirement. And these two of some some can think like, wow, these are really cool. But like, how how we can achieve it? Like uh, usually in our mobile cell, we see the towers next to us. So how we can achieve this? And that's all thanks to the small data. So the Internet of Things is 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 good. It will provide a lot of uh, information, but from billions of devices. But the device itself they don't transmit a lot of information. For example, air quality, which provides you a sensor of information about CO2 in your in your place or your city. And this information is very short. So narrow bandwidth transceivers or trans transmitters. You can use it, and if you use narrow band with uh, signals, then you can achieve the low power and long range. Of course, after a really massive amount of engineering happened there. So accordingly, you see uh, low power wide area network technologies are very like as you see a lot of them already now existing, and uh, some of them licensed, like they used by the providers, the license spectrum. So you see it like narrow band IoT and and uh, LTEM etc and there are w others work in the unlicensed spectrum which is most like notably is Sigfox and LoRa and there are some other which is unlicensed but they are not really necessarily uh, LP1 but they can categorize, categorize like such from time to time which is one which we are in I used in my in my, my thesis here is dash 7 so obviously you see the technology, the communication technology is mature. So that's that's good. We we can use it, and people still use it, and 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 it's expected to to improve really uh, uh, later uh, in, uh, in the future. So it's relatively mature. It can achieve really long range up to like 50 kilometers or something of range with very small battery. So that's good. But we have the problem that the positioning and the tracking. So how, uh, like where your device is, that's still under develop, development, and and that's also the, one of the focus of this uh, th of my research, which is researching on the positioning and tracking. But first, positioning is actually fine. Like the like what is positioning? Positioning is finding your way or your or your, your finding your your device. So if you have a your device implanted somewhere in, 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 in an object, and this object mobile move and here and so you need to find to you need to find a way to to get your your device so that's positioning so what is the applications so it can like really here are very short examples of applications first safety like uh, there are wide areas in the world which they don't have mobile coverage or any kind of network coverage so if you are lost there then it's done deal you are gone while in this case such a positioning technique it can be really the thread between life and death so that's that's one applications you have also a, a tracking asset so in that case if you have a lot of especially for industry requirements when they have a lot of containers shipments all over the world so tracking them is quite important and keep keep knowledge about their whereabouts automation so imagine if you have drones which they work automatically in your farm I'm, I'm, I'm giving here an example then the the drone needs to know its location in order to go execute uh, a, a task at other certain locations so automation is a quite like uh, local uh, positioning for automation is very very important and scientific applications like uh, there are now a lot of companies they are really tracking uh, uh, endangered animals like rhinos and, and and elephants and all these kind of animals or or for or, or tracking like uh, migrations of of uh, uh, of uh, birds so uh, all this for scientific application uh, applications and reservations of endangered animal uh, that's a quite important task so now the next question here okay perfect we need localization but we already have it right so we have gps we have it in your phone you can use it it's perfect it gives you uh, uh, it gives you the the the, the 
the local the, your location within a few meters which is quite good like for these for these applications even you don't need that precision you can work with with a hundred uh, hundred tens of or hundreds of meters so why we don't use it so the first reason why we don't use gps first it's power hungry so uh, in, uh, like in your lab uh, if you if you are driving and making your navigation on your 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 energy drains like directly and that's why your phone you need to charge it all um, much much more often when you are using gps all the time this is the first thing and that's of course defeat the purpose if you are you need to charge all the time then low lp1 low power is not there anymore so that's the first reason the second reason uh, you need extra hardware so if you in order to have a gps you need to add a, a gps hardware a chip and antennas all these will make the, the 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 installation is harder and bigger for for any application so that's the other reason and the final thing of course like it's not necessarily everywhere so a lot of locations are really without gps coverage or or they can go very bad especially indoor so now okay so now what is the solutions how we can do that so we don't use gps so we need to find a way to do local positioning for lp1 so uh, there are in general three kind of, of 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 techniques to do positioning the first one is called received signal strength localization so the premise of that if you have a transmitter uh, a transmit at a certain power as you see like four four stripes of power when you receive it at uh, the receiver point which is a bit far away from you you receive it with with low level of uh, uh, with low level received signal strength and if you can comp compare it with the pre with how much you transmitted you you calculated the the difference and then you can find your location so that's a quite easy to deploy obviously like you, you just need to know how much the power that has been transmitted but uh, uh, this is very uh, uh, very easy to deploy, but at the same time, it's not really accurate because it varies between environment to environment. So if you have a transmission in rural areas, it's different than urban environment. So that's uh, that's the uh, uh, the difference that we can. Uh, uh, that's the difference that. Uh, 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 it will be easily uh, easily influenced by the environment so the accuracy is poor but it's easy way to deploy it so there are notably a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, technologies use it notably sigfox and neuroband iot the second technique is the time based the idea is now you if you know the time exactly when your transmitter has been transmitting and then the receiver compare the time that it received it and the time difference you can calculate the distance so it's logical it's uh, uh, you like it's the logical way to find the, to 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 achieve um, uh, uh, ranging so you know the distance between your transmitter and receiver and then uh, you can do localization and positioning but of course this technique uh, first you need a lot of synchronization which is a very hard and tough work to do and secondly the accuracy it can be accurate but you need a very uh, a very big bandwidth so very wide bandwidth and that's of course is not available for lp1 so the whole lp1 story is about using small data with neural bandwidth so that's why it's uh, it's not utilized that often, but like uh, one of the famous uh, example for using uh, something similar to that is LoRa communication. Of course, LoRa they don't use as I am saying here. So because I can imagine like a lot of people will say, okay, that's what normally they do. But the concept is uh, here we they call it time of arrival. LoRa use what it called time difference of arrival, which is uh, uh, which is slightly different, but the concept is the same. You depending on the time of the received signal. The the third one, which is the angle of arrival based localization. The idea is now uh, okay. We can make uh, the 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 the, heart, the the receiver a bit complex. So in this, as you can see, instead of using a single antenna, the receiver using several antennas for the same receiver and then based by utilizing that you can find the direction of of that the direction of the transmitting device so that seems good but the problem of course you need extra hardware 
So you you need like the, the, the extra hardware to implement these these extra antennas. And also the accuracy of, of, of the angle, it will be related to the approach, uh, to, related to how many antennas that you are using. The more antennas you are using, the the more uh, uh, accuracy you can achieve. So that's uh, that's a quite uh, so in that case the complexity also increases, and that's why you don't we don't see that up to my knowledge there is no yet uh, utilized for LP1. They, it, this technique, even though uh, it works for LP1 theoretically very well, uh, but it's not yet utilized for LP1 technologies and. Uh, up to my knowledge, of course, and that's because of its complexity mainly. And of course, the complexity comes with high cost, and also high cost complexity is contradicts with LP1 technology. And that's of course when I when we saw that uh, Professor Mar Martin Wine thought, okay, we should then investigate this as for PhD, and that's thus my my position has been um, appeared. So first, I will talk about the uh, AOA base position. So because that's what I'm mostly what I will follow here. <coughs> AOA position, AOA based posi posi positioning is it depends, as I said, on on that on that category. If you add uh, antennas to the receiver, more antennas to the receiver, you can really estimate the the, the theta or the angle from where the signal for the from where the signal has been transmitted how that works uh, the best way to really especially for non experts like here i'm just talking really like for uh, uh, for anyone who's who never heard of that it's based on on biology really so in in general imagine you are in a dark room and somebody speaks to you uh, you somehow can recognize from where the from where where is the location of your of your uh, uh, of of the speaker and how we can do that even though it's super dark you cannot see it um, and that's based really on on your on your antennas which is the sensors the the, the, the your ears so when your ears hear uh, the 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 signals or the voice that comes to you at different time between the first and the second ear and because of that of course our signal processing unit which is our brain uh, can distinguish can distinguish this difference even though it's, we do it unconsciously but our brain can distinguish that and you can look into that into that uh, person, even if it's dark. Uh, uh, antenna system is the same. Array antenna system is the same. So you see the the front end incident, uh, uh, the incident front end comes to the first antennas before it arrives to the second antenna, before it arrives to the nth antennas. This difference in time, you can really then map it into angle, and that's how we do angle of arrival estimation so that's the the simplest way to uh, uh to to go to go into that of course then yeah a lot of problems occurs but this is the basic concept the basic concept of angle of arrival now how we do positioning if we have several angle of arrival units as you can see and we know from each unit from where uh, the, uh, the direction of the transmitter simply we can intersect between and uh, intersect between these these arrows and then we can find the location of the transmitter so that's general ideas about how we can do localization with angle of arrival what do we need for that of course we need antenna uh, uh, ante array antenna system, which it has mul mul multiple antennas, and we need a signal processing, you know, AOA estimation algorithms, and all triangulations. So, of course, when we add extra hardware, that's costly. So that's that's a pr that's that's also a quite um, uh, uh, it's, it's it's more costly than a, s a normal single antenna, single uh, transmitter, single antenna receiver. And of course, due to all this signal processing, the AOA estimation is complex. And of course, one does not simply make the complex simple. So that here appears the objective of my thesis, which is I need a way to, the main objective is I need to way to uh, reduce the estimate, uh, the, reduce the cost and complexity of AOA estimation system. Because we know it can work, but 
there, these are the two obstacles in order to work with LP1. So how we do that, I did it in two parts. The first part is for the estimation. So the unit itself, the hardware, the one which gave me the angle, the single angle. So uh, uh, I need to use a reliable hardware and of course, a very efficient algorithm. So that's the, the first two, uh, that's for, for, for AO estimation part. And then of course, when I get the AO estimation part working, I need to put them in algorithm for localization. So if I have several of them in order to do the an intersection correctly, uh, uh, I need accurate uh, localization. Sorry, I, uh, and then um, the first part, uh, sorry, there was accident, uh, <laughs> uh, hands up. So it's, uh, I thought uh, it's a question or something. So uh, the first, so I start with the first part and actually here where my thesis was started. So the first part is how to, uh, 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 I will I will talk about it in chapters really in order to follow. So in case like this this presentation occurs, so people can follow the chapters. So the first part, as I said, having several antenna uh, uh, array antenna systems, as you can see it here, like other RX, uh, it's a quite complex. It can be easier actually to have a, a small antennas. For here, the example, only two of them, and then combine them in separate, hard, uh, in separate uh, 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 hardwares. And that's, that's instead of having a one, one, one receiver of all these antennas, no, having small antennas, small anten array antennas, and then combine them. And of course, it's been published really in IEEE transactions and antennas and, uh, uh, and the propagation, uh, this chapter. I will go through this. Uh, uh, in a quite like uh, abstract way. So I, I, present, uh, I presented in this chapter the algorithm to do that. The first thing I need to synchronize the time and the frequency because every antenna is separate. They are really working in different time and different frequency. And after I can I do that, I do phase, um, uh, phase coherency. So I impose the phase to be correct. And yes, you can see in this figure, uh, before the phase, so the left, the left part of it before the phase, and the right part of it is uh, is uh, after after the correction. And you see at 60 ang at 60 degrees after the correction, all all the receive signals they look at 60 degrees, while the other are rubbish, giving you at 90 degrees it gives you 90 degrees. So the algorithms in Anikov chamber works uh, nicely. Then. Okay, it works in a in, in controlled environment. We need to test it in a real environment. So we use this kind of hardware. So two antenna systems, uh, two array antenna systems. Everyone has two, so that's why we have four antennas here. And uh, I did experiment in, in here in, in the university campus, and uh, it worked. Uh, uh, it improved the estimation. So instead of using two antennas to estimate the angle, I used here four and it worked and it, it improved the estimation. Not just like that, I have also simulation examples about different configuration because the antennas, you can not just put them like an, over a line, you can put them over a circle or, or, or a rectangle. So you can move, you can, you can put it in any, any, um, in any uh, structure you would like. And with this also, we, with the simulation examples also, it worked and it achieved uh, uh, good estimation. So uh, it improved the estimation uh, from the single one. So that's the first, the first chapter, uh, the, 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 the second chapter was introduced uh, here using uh, uh, commercial of the shelf uh, hardware. So this hardware, I didn't play with it. I just played with the algorithm part of, of this, uh, of, uh, of the angle of arrival estimation system. But then I thought, okay, now I need really to work on, on, on the hardware itself. So not just use the one commercially available, but actually build the one or at least uh, utilize, utilize it in a more efficient way. And that's the, 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 that's the third chapter. You can see it here. Also, it's been published in IEEE Transactions, Wireless and Communications. Um, uh, I, um, the ch actually here, what, what we did, we had hardware and software part. The hardware part, we took the, the, the hardware as you can see it here. So the, uh, the single hardware, the, the challenging here, how we can make this single hardware into multiple 
uh, uh, antenna system, so our array antenna system. We combined it together. That was a bit of a hustle, but it went well. And thanks to Dennis, we, we, we managed to make it work. And, um, and then after that, we have eight antenna uh, uh, eight, uh, eight antenna elements uh, uh, array, which is that's quite uh, uh, quite very good, really, for for such a uh, uh, applications for for LP1 applications. And also, it's worth notice uh, mentioning that um, this the cost of this these hardwares and this implementation it's a bit of like it was a round of a couple hundreds, while if we want to utilize the same eight antenna elements of all of the shelf, it can go to several thousand. So here we really managed to make it low cost kind of solution. Then we deploy, of course, we need to test it. So we test it with LoRa signal. And this is, we utilize the LoRa, the LoRa modulation on every, all the aspects into, uh, into that, into our system. And then we use SIG algorithm here and it worked. We, I did experiment in uh, urban and suburban environment, and the results uh, was really good, even with non line of sight. So the non line of sight locations, as you can see to the right spectrogram, it's it's gone. You don't see the signal anymore, but still you can you can do uh, AOA estimation to it, and the the complete full results of that is presented in the thesis. So so far we I done all all outdoor. Now I thought is the way to present something indoor, and here I pre like uh, I present the finding in two papers. The, uh, I applied several algorithms. Here is just experimental results for in chapter four has been presented for for indoor localized uh, for indoor AOA estimation. Various amount of of of, uh, of uh, uh, algorithms has been used. And uh, it was the experiment in two uh, in two rooms, like it's in a classroom in our campus, and you can uh, and they are separate between uh, they separate by 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 a wall and door, so there's no non, non line of sight uh, position, and uh, we actually achieved uh, it's been achieved okay uh, good results for for the giving uh, for the giving. Uh, scenarios and also the comparison shows that sage in a way the algorithm if anyone interested in that like uh, provide better than some others and also of course when you increase the amount as i said before when you increase the amount of antennas you, the accuracy increase so you see the accuracy at four antenna elements is less than uh, six and six less than four uh, and uh, less than eight antenna elements of course depending on all the algorithms as well so now I came to chapter five, and this chapter present. So in this, I thought I would need to simplify it even more, make it even more more easy deploy. Uh, and uh, the premise of the, of course, also the finding of this chapter has been presented in a paper. Uh, the idea is using what we call it analog beam forming, uh, and specifically Rotman lens. You see, it's a very a hardware. It's a lens. I will show it in a bit, so you have ideas about it. But first, I compare it with the uh, like with the origin of with what I used so far, what we call it in the digital domain. So all the uh, uh, all the antennas goes to a receiver, and then it will be sampled, and it's all in the digital domains. Uh, for Rotman lens uh, solution here, no, actually, like the whole. Uh, 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 diversity happens in the analog domain. So the processing is not really that much. And just based on the received signal strength, you can do angle of arrival. Uh, this, uh, this is the, the simple uh, design of it. And this is the, the how, how it end up. This is how it looks. It looks, I like it really a lot. It was fun to, to build it with, thanks for Arna also help, help with that. And uh, it was it was uh, it, it was really like we like it's been built here in the in the university campus, and then you see it here on on work. So you see it uh, uh, the Rotman lens. You have, you have the antennas. This is in the Anico chamber in our campus, and then we do the IOA estimation. You see here also the diversity. So uh, how how it's nicely every port of the antennas like this colored uh, patterns looks at specific direction which that was very and uh, very good results given the fact that we built it in campus like by hand and the result was really also uh, um, 
it, it was uh, for 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 any echo chamber was good really results and especially when we utilize the power instead the power in watt instead of dB. The second part here about the localization. So uh, here now we have not only one antennas, but we have several of them. And then we need to find the location, not just the direction. For this, uh, for this chapter, we utilized uh, the, the uh, MVDR algorithm in order to do the angle of arrival estimation. And we util uh, this, I, I, I noticed that here, and I built a hypothesis that Whenever the, this, what you're seeing here, the curve is, is the spectrogram, or the, sorry, the, the, the spectra, the angle spectra of, of the MVDR, what produced you. The sharper the, the, sharper the, the, the spectra, the, the, the more the accuracy. And that's why how we hypothesize, uh, how we deployed this information also in our estimation system. So you see it here. With utilization and without utilization, the, the, the system perform much better when you utilize this specific information. The, wide, the, the, sharper, the, the sharper the pattern, the, the, the better the estimation. By utilizing this, we, it has been improved. The localization has become sub-meter accuracy. And also, uh, the full result is presented in, 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 in the thesis. Uh, the angle, the th this chapter seven before the last, is the angle algorithms has been employed here, and uh, uh, the angle is actually a, very, a fundamentally uh, 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 a, a very simple mathematical uh, uh, um, algorithm, but surprisingly provide a very accurate result. Um, uh, you can see it is just a multiplications, like uh, point to point multiplications. Uh, but actually, when you do what you see, it can produce you a heat map or, or, or a d density map, which gives you bulb towards the direction. So the transmitter here in this picture, last picture, is where at 8, at location 8. And you see it, it gives you good results at that location. It's been compared this uh, with an array antenna system of eight antenna elements, as you can see it here in, in, the, in the left figure. And the same setup as the previous one. And you see the angle give roll for L for all the for all the locations gives estimation error max can goes to uh, within a meter, so that was a very promising compared with the other algorithms was much much uh, performed much better, and not just like that also you see the computations of it it's in microsecond uh, in milliseconds rather the others they can really go to up to a second. So that's that's also the so the computational intensity of it is not that much. So that's very good. The final chapter it's um, it's about um, oh, actually we've been asked by the by by, by the city of Antwerp uh, to to uh, to do some kind of system to um, make a smart pedestrian crossing. Um, and that comes to us with the ideas of using angle of arrival estimation system. So as you can see, there are pedestrians and they have their transmitters. And then when they walk through the, through, uh, through the, uh, over, over the pedestrian crossing, uh, you can detect where they are. Um, for this, we used uh, six antenna elements and Sage algorithm, particle filter, and also the utilization see me here on the red spot like uh, walking in front of the cars and doing the experiments and i think here we have this running you can see it like it can follow easily all 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 the estimations like of the locations but i think i am really running out of time so i need really to keep going and uh, of course the error uh, the estimation was was within like meters accuracy which is that uh, that was also very promising to to pursue so conclusions. Uh, so the, what, what's the conclusions? So now I will build it based on three aspects. If you have LP1 technology, if you have array antenna system, and you have various algorithms, you can combine small array antennas into a single one, give you better accuracy. You can provide, you can provide, um, uh, AOA estimation outdoor and indoor for LoRa and the accuracy was always very good and that's that's really a promising even with below noise floor and indoor uh, AOA estimations line of sight and long line of sight conditions uh, has been investigated and uh, and present the results RSS based AOA estimation is possible 
uh, by if we uh, can exploit analog beam forming. So for the AOA based localization part, I have we uh, uh, the information uh, regarding the AOA estimation is uh, crucial in order to have the in order to have accurate localization. That's the first thing. The second thing, angle, it's very easy. You should use it. So whoever listened to me and expert in an AOA, you should use angle. It's very easy and very, to deploy and very uh, it, and it's uh, and the results prove that it works well. And finally, single uh, single unit AOA based localization system is possible if you know your environment. If you know there is a pedestrian and the pedestrian will not walk only over the pedestrian crossing. So even with single antenna elements, you still uh, can do localization. Outlook, so what I hope somebody pick up this topic is we need impl FPGA implementation. So that means hardware implementation to make it more fast and more on online kind of estimation. Um, uh, we need to study the impact of using a different kind of antenna system. So like circular, like I done some kind of, of, of uh, uh, research with the various par uh, uh, array antenna systems, but I didn't really went uh, through into the analysis. Um, uh, that's something is required. Uh, low power AOA estimation, that's a crucial. And uh, if we can do that, then we can have mobile uh, direction finding, which that means you have it like on you and then you know the location of a transmitter without the need of infrastructure. Uh, RSS based, of course, it's possible uh, to do for uh, any coke chamber, what we need to test it for, for a real life environment. Uh, like standing, uh, uh, as, uh, in general, I think the more information, the better. So in order to do, not just to use AOA, but any kind of other information we have. So what we, so uh, uh, sensor fusion information, that's really also very important to add in order to have accurate localization. And finally, uh, AOA based, uh, now a hot topic, which is an, a low orbit satellite, a low earth uh, orbit satellites is uh, quite, um, that now it's working all, all the time. You see like companies like Starlink or uh, uh, they are really posting a lot of satellites and these satellites you can use also with them AOA based localizations in, in a kind of signal of opportunity uh, fashion. 